Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes. For this flight I'm going from Oslo to Stockholm in an MD-82. This is the stock MD-82, the one that comes with X-Plane 11. And well, it's got a nice overhead panel. Uh, usually that's the thing I look for first. And uh, most of the switches work, but not all. I'm curious to see how the pressurization system works and whether I need to toggle it or whether it's okay as is with the engines started up running. Um, don't, I'm not really familiar. It doesn't look like I can change much here as I hover above the, I know you can't see my cursor, but I'm basically basically hovering around the controls here and I don't think I can do much toggling. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, so we'll see whether we all lose air again as I have on some flights because I forgot about that. And our livery is a Scandinavian Airlines livery, looking spiffy, very appropriate for this context, and that's why I picked this plane for this flight. Now, for the Apollo 12 audio, which we have been listening to so far during this series, we are currently in the middle of a press conference. It's an end of shift press conference in between the two EVAs that they do on the moon, so there are two moonwalks. And uh, the press conference, the shift was actually during their nighttime when they were mostly sp uh, sleeping. But at the point we're at in the press conference, they're just about to talk about what the two on the surface, Pete Conrad and Al Bean, are going to be doing on the EVA. So I guess it's worthwhile to listen into that instead of skipping the press conference. And then uh, Pete Conrad and Al Bean will suit up for their EVA. I don't know whether we'll get to the actual EVA during this video or not, we'll see. So without further ado, let us start that audio. Uh, a matter to be handled in real time as we go along, as we see how much we're getting done, and, and as we continue to monitor these consumables. But based upon their performance in the first and EVA, here we go. And the performance of the backpacks, there will be plenty of uh, consumables to extend. Uh, let me acquaint you briefly if I can with the Travers plan. We landed all oh, about 600 feet northwest of the surveyor to the best of our ability to pin it down and it's there within 100 feet or so. Uh, the first activity when they get out will be, uh, aside from uh, the ladder work and getting down there, will be associated with the television camera. We're going to turn it back on and see if we can get it to work. If we can't get it to work, we're going to turn it off and before the men leave the vicinity of the spacecraft, they will clip the wires with okay, the up. cutters that they Flaps use up. the surveyor and then leave it in the vicinity of the spacecraft. They'll then go on out to the northwest to the uh, ALSEP and take a look at the cold cathode uh, ion gauge unit to see exactly how it's sitting on the ground and whether the cover is on or off. Uh, after that time they will then come on having gone up from the spacecraft to the northwest they'll swing on down below the spacecraft and come on around uh, going through a number of uh, what you might call checkpoints where we've laid out different uh, activities to help the geology program that is panoramic photographs, core samples, documented samples, etc. Uh, at which time they will enter the uh, area of the surveyor and do the perform work there and head on back to the spacecraft. We have a stowage plan with a television camera, which they would pick up and bring back to the ship. Uh, and you probably heard, or they will have on the air to ground transcript, the uh, particular uh, geological features or activities that will be engaged in at a couple of control points as we move along with the time. Uh, we're going to bring back one rock bag in the cockpit rather than two. Uh, because of some recent studies which indicate that uh, you don't want to tie down any more than the weight that would be in one bag rather than the weight that would be in two so that, that you wouldn't run the risk of any loose objects running around the cockpit once we get in power flight. And uh, probably the last change that would, that would be of significance is we will try to get a core tube sample with uh, two uh, core tubes connected so as to get a sample from a deeper depth at the moon and uh, that'll be stowed of course as usual in the rock boxes and brought back uh, and I think the 
success of that will depend upon the particular soil that we end up trying to take the sample. Very quickly, then, that's the status. Uh, They'll clarify, but uh, there are rock boxes and rock bags, and they're only doing one rock bag, but there are other rock boxes as well. Uh, we're going to let the command module pilot sleep uh, to about the scheduled time, which would probably coincide with the beginning of the EBA. Uh, on the high gain antenna, if anyone has a question about that, we don't know any more than was last reported to you. Looking very uh, we're good right now. Summarizing for ourselves all that we know about that situation. Uh, however, we're not in any hurry to get in any troubleshooting at this time. Uh, we would be content to continue on the Omnis. Uh, just recently, we have the Goldstone 210 dish. Uh, I think it's a Goldstone. One of the 210 dishes. Hope oh, we don't have uh, solid clouds all over the, the place, the though. High bit rate or the, or the maximum intelligence telemetry. Pretty um, solid CSM right now, though. So that doesn't oh, represent little gap there. That about sums it up. Uh, I'll try to answer any questions. All right. Looks okay. good up ahead. Uh, I didn't quite understand about the, uh, the rock bags. Does that, does that mean that you're going to bring back uh, half the amount you expected to? They'll uh, fill up two rock bag boxes. Uh, we were also going to try to bring back an additional two bags full of rocks, but that's going to be one bag. Why are the BTUs down? I guess that's a little bit hard to say, but uh, the prediction that we make as to what the workload is going to be at the moon is based on approximations of what uh, the men will have to deal with in the lunar environment, the 16G, and apparently we just can't tell where this, this is the. I got in late, and if you covered this, I'm photo sorry. Photo scenery or stock scenery? I think that's, that's stock but, scenery. Uh, why are you going to clip the wires on the TV if the TV camera Oh, I see the photo scenery line now. And also, I asked earlier today whether there would be any possibility of Let's go over the there. TV camera back for failure analysis, and I haven't got an answer on that. The answer to your second question is yes. If, it, if we turn it on and it doesn't work, we will bring it back for failure analysis. And the reason for clipping the wires is to get it. To follow up on that, will you will you put it in a bag? Obviously, it'll be quote contaminated unquote. So we'll put it in the a lithium hydroxide canister in the lamb, and then of course we'll put it. I'm not quite sure where I didn't hear in the command module they have a place, and we'll have to treat it like any other material that we have in the cockpit. Okay. What is the total? footage on the traverse? Uh, I can only give you an estimate of that, but it would be on the order of a mile. Uh, and the furthest distance they would be from the lunar module would be on the order of about 1,500 feet as the crow might fly. Uh, they will be about southwest when they are 1,500 feet, which would be their furthest uh, straight line distance from the lunar module. Southwest. What is the uh, thinking now about TV camera, and has there been, is there going to be any consideration to taking a backup on future flights? Well, relative to the camera, we don't know why it failed. I described to you the process we have for bringing it back to find out why it failed, and any decision about a backup would really depend upon what we found out about that. Supposing that you turn it on, it does work. You have had a failure in this thing. Would you not then want to bring it back afterward for failure analysis anyway? Uh, when I left, I hadn't worked it all the way through to that, but I think the answer would be yes to that question. Theoretically, visual estimation of distance should be faulty on the moon or be difficult. Has there been any evidence that uh, visual estimation of Well, we're at 25,000 feet and haven't blacked out, so pressurization seems to be all right. The dial seems to indicate that the cabin pressure is definitely lower than the external pressure. 
uh, and that there's secondly, a difference of five psi or something like that. Although I'm getting out on a limb, that there's probably uh, or is that something 5, to be learned feet. about taking photographs before you roll it and then taking the photographs One of, the of two. its uh, path down the hill. Uh, so uh, right now the cabin does, uh, altitude is, is close to 7,000 feet, which is fine. I'm still a little confused on the rocks and at the elimination of this. I think it totaled. I guess that means it's five psi on the inner dial. Kate said it would not be brought back. Yet you're bringing back a camera and cable weighing 13 plus pounds. Why couldn't you put the rocks in the lithium hydroxide? Found it that seam between the photo scenery down. and the no. stock scenery is right the there. Only, I'll keep to this the view. Only problem with that is one of handling the Might need more chunks the, uh, from Norway and Sweden. Putting the rocks in there, it turns out that uh, the canister seems to be fitted to handle the camera. Uh, but uh, the problem with having the rocks in there, without having some uh, way of covering the canister and tying it down, which we don't readily have, although we could rig one probably, would be that they might become loose and cut, which we don't. Father, what is that? That cut from something to about 20 pounds. What's your total amount of rocks and soil you now expect to get back from the surface on this mission? Uh, I don't know. It's something like 80 to 100 pounds, but I don't know the exact number. 80 to 100, but I'm not sure the exact number. And one bag. Yes. As I understand the present traverse plan, you're going to go down the western slope of the crater that the surveyor is in. Uh, isn't it true that all the prior evidence we have is that that slope is twice as steep as the slope that the surveyor is resting on? We are only going on Conrad's visual estimation of the fact that that slope is not as steep as originally thought. Well, uh, to the first part of your question, I don't know what the slope is on that side. I'd always paid attention to the photographs on the, the eastern side, which were about 14 to 15 degrees, as I recall. Uh, uh, at this stage of the game, though, uh, I think we would have to go with the accurate estimate, uh, probably more accurate estimate, of what the slope is on that side, on the western side, from the pilots there observing it. Yeah, I mean, obviously you're going to go with you, the pilots you, there observing uh, it. Discussing the traverse on air to ground you gave you started to get that's the whole point of having them there would it be possible to get a list of these uh, coordinates for the entire traverse uh, we have an item I assume that uh, they can get them over to you I don't have them we can get that far and you know they're in the maps that the pilots are carrying it's in the you would need the map to go with it We've got some clouds baked into the ground texture, unfortunately. We have said so far that, that the slope where the surveyor is on is 15 degrees, which is not a very uh, steep slope, but the astronauts keep saying it's a very steep slope. Now, is your estimate wrong, or are they seeing it wrong? What would you say? Uh, the estimate we have the 15 degrees, of course, is pre-flight. What they're telling us is that the approach to the uh, surveyor, irregardless of the numbers that anybody is estimating or talking about, appears to be a lot easier from the western side, and that's the side that they prefer to approach it from, so uh, that's what we would do. But if it were possible to release these detailed maps of these areas uh, prior to the missions, the way you release the fine plans, because we're all struggling a fair amount to try and map out these traverses, and now we're talking about coordinates, we could have solved that problem if they were released before, perhaps we could consider that in 13. I think the problem on the maps uh, is one of availability. I, I don't know that I can speak categorically about all maps, but I know that um, a number of them have been in great uh, demand and very short supply right up uh, to the mission. It's, uh, as I understand it, the major problem is just uh, the availability of some of these maps, getting them, getting people uh, available to work on them and to turn them out. And we just haven't had that many of them. Makes it sound like the maps are hand drawn. I don't know, I guess they don't Xerox them, I, I guess, I, I don't know when the Xerox machines were made. Copy machines. It's a good question.
Of course, if you start giving him to out to some people, you have to give him out to everybody, basically. Are there going to be death samples taken back for a scientific study? They can't help it. They're definitely bringing back some dust. I think they get a fair amount of dust in the boxes that they bring back, and they'll get a fair amount just in the pack. Dust have a peculiar or specific action. Does it absorb into the skin? Are we being taken over by lunar dust? Have we been infiltrated by lunar dust? Dust. Uh, the speculation I heard about the problem with the camera was that the lens burned out. You don't burn the lens of the camera out normally. Is it the coating on the cathode ray on the uh, uh, image tube or what? As I understand it, it's the Viticon tube that is of concern. However, it's not conclusive that that is what is burned, or that it's not some mechanical. It's not inside of the tube. I'll take one last question on the How is the final medical status of uh, the three asthmas, both Lee and Conrad and uh, Dick Gordon on the CSM? When the commander woke up this morning, he spoke for our, both of the men uh, in the limb, and they both had about five hours sleep and were feeling fine. They reported, and yep. they sound to be that very good. You know, today's work. Uh, Let's get some of this view. Sleep, of course, uh, but our last conversation with him indicated he also was feeling fine. Thank you very much. I'm going lower than I wanted. Not that it makes a whole lot of difference. It's a fairly short flight. Going this low would probably not be a bad idea. Hours, 57 minutes. There was very little conversation during the news but there's conference. not a whole lot to we'll sightsee as far as I can tell. Not a lot of towns operation. around here. The landscape is as you... Oh, there's a weird angle. They will be starting oh, there's the, uh, some stutteries. Portable life support system. We're not that close to Stockholm, so I don't know. In, uh, I was loading something. Minutes, they are anyway, at yeah, point in not pre -EVA the most detailed landscape ever right now. We have advised the crew that when they get to the cold cathode ion gauge at the ALSEP that uh, we will advise them as to uh, whether to touch it or not. Uh, we're going to leave the power on that and uh, have them tell us what status that instrument is in. And if there's a need to touch think, it, we... If I recall correctly, ALSEP power is powered by an RTG, so... And advise them when they can touch it. Yeah. And the Capcom Might need some advice on whether to touch it or not. I don't know what part to they're to touching or whether the RTG the is involved, but it seems to be a power issue. Their wives. Jane Conrad sent congratulations on the job well done on the first EVA and Sue Bean advised Al that she and the children were tired but happy and that both wives were looking forward to following the second EVA. We'll come up now and alive again and uh, monitor. Intrepid Houston, uh, we're configured for the FM. Let's give it another go. The Yankee Clipper is behind the moon, and Dick Gordon. Intrepid Houston. Okay, how do you read? We read you loud and clear. Okay, we've got the TV going right now, also. Roger. Dick Gordon has 30 minutes remaining in his sleep period. BHFA transmit and receive, B receive. LMPS band TR, ICSTR, relay on, mode box. 
VHFA transmit, receive. VHFB receive. Here comes your comm. VHF. Point. On. Off. On. Off. I. Range off reset. 12 JMB noise special plus 101 and a half. Recorder on. VHF antenna to EVA. Okay, we're about halfway through the trip. Uplink 12 enabled. Almost LFB halfway across Sweden. Audio CB. That picture is coming in now. It does not look too Town big. there is Halifors. And yes, the TV image from Apollo 12 has not improved. Interesting winding highway there. Let's mode LMC to A. A. Hello there. Read you loud and clear, Pete. Read, read you the same. Should have a tone on, a vent flag, a P, and a press flag O. Got him. Let's go to press gauge greater than 75. It is. We got a good comp check with me. No, that's stuff we don't need that. Commander going to postcom. Okay, Dad. Hold the card. And B's off, okay. Let's move Commander to B. Get no misfit reception. Hello there, I read you loud and clear. I got a press O flag. Read you the same. I got an O2 flag and I got 80%. Okay, vent flag P and a press flag O. Here's what I've got. You usually have an O2 to begin with, do you? Yep, got an O2 press and vent. O2 will go out in a minute. Okay. Yep. Okay, put those two great Yep. Okay, perform kind of did that. Let's mode that. Uh, I'm the you goggle me and you go away. Okay. Oops. Okay. Interesting lighting on it right now. Intrepid, we read you both loud and clear. Seems a bit more bumpy than I'd expect. Very good. Okay, Houston, the LMP's O2 quantity is 80%. Maybe that's just being coming. highlighted by the lighting. And so is the TV. And CDR 80% also. Roger. Okay, we're opening the TV circuit breaker right now. Roger. Final system prep. TV 16. Looking six. good in here. Seven repress close. Verify. It's closed. Fan Delta P open. Fuel is fine. Open. TV 11 ECS. Fan 1 open. Okay. Okay, verify ECS caution H2O step component lights on. Down in a minute. Down. Okay, suit gas diverter, pull egress. Oh, I'll get it. Okay. Wouldn't be bad for us to start descending to pull Stockholm egress. now. Okay, cabin gas return to egress. I know it's been fairly cabin short, but Oslo and, and Stockholm are just not too far apart auto. from each other. Suit sugar release is in auto. Okay, connect to the OPSs. Okay. Oh, that, that's looking Second. good right there. There's your hose. Let me button your flaps. All right. Definitely better sunlight now. All right. Cut some throttle and let it head on down slowly. So there's this uh, pretty significant waterway that uh, leads up to now Stockholm. Stockholm's back. sort of in the middle of uh, the mouth of this waterway that has a lot of rivers flowing into it. But I don't know what it's called really. Uh, the only label I see on the map is Malaren. M-A-L-A-R-E-N. Turn to the right here. I guess... That's what it is. 
Let me look that up. Uh, historically referred to as Lake Malar. Okay, well that seems to be the, the one. Third largest freshwater lake in Sweden. some Viking age settlements. Anyway, we'll get a closer yeah. look, of course. We are not there yet. Etymological okay. origin of name... Okay stems from Old Norse meaning gravel. The lake was previously known as Logren. There's a little uh, accent on the O, which is Old Norse for the lake. <laughs> uh, okay. Yes, sir. It's a verified lock. Okay. It is the lake. steady descent so far. We actually passed by Assad Boffer's test center, AB, I guess AB airbase, uh, way back there. Didn't really see much. Yeah, missed that. This airport, uh, that we're passing by currently under the cloud there is Arboga Airport. Okay, and to our left there is Malarin, Lake Malarin, however you want to designate it. Now the body's looking a little bit spiffier. I think it was just the lighting that made it look too bumpy. It's a fairly complicated lake as far as lakes go. Okay. Hold still, I'll put this on, alright? Good cool. 
on here today. Get a little chilled out with this LCD. Okay, well, before we descend below 10,000 feet, we're going to need to slow down somewhat. We're over the lake right now, but we can't see very well with the clouds. Okay, there we go. Sort of a line in the middle of the lake. They took uh, one image in one season. A fairly dry season by the look of it. And then on this side, a very wet season. <laughs> so, hmm. Quite a con oh, it's just this patch here that was in a very different season. Aut uh, autumn, I guess, maybe? I don't know. Uh, the city over there is Vesteris. Roger, Pete. We'll be waiting for those pictures. At the top end of that bay. Okay, it's got a Stockholm Vesteris airport, but it's a heck of a long way from Stockholm to be associated with Stockholm. Okay, how about that? Guess we'll go with this view. Oh, it's my, uh, yeah, that thing is. Let me turn that off. I don't think it's necessary right now. There's a whole lot to this lake. Okay, we really need to slow down now. No, 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 don't go down. Break. Gloves are important. Uh, those are very important. I think uh, Stockholm is loading. Sudden stickiness. I don't know if I have any special scenery in Stockholm. We'll see. It's loading something. Yeah. Hmm. Quite a lot, apparently. Okay, stop it. Stop. Stop loading things. Okay. I hung up again. I don't know. Let me see. Oh, you look okay. I can't move in for some reason. Move over my way just a little way. Never mind. I'm going to do it with these. All right? Yep. Really complicated, Lake. This is going to do it better. Also, right little islands in the middle of it. Done it that way yesterday. Branches, right. bays. Look, look, look Okay, it works. Pretty steamy. Here's a pair of gloves for you. See, let me grab that checklist again, okay? Okay. So, this out of following helmet, visor, lock, and adjust it. Okay. Okay, you're locked and adjusted. Okay, torso tied down, adjusted. I can see that you are locked. I can see it. In good shape. Okay. Okay, torso tied in. That's okay. I 
It's okay, Tim. Okay, O2 connectors. Let me check all yours. Did you check all mine? Those are vertical. Okay, we're sort of north of Stockholm. I'm gonna follow the bay towards it. Find the lake. This lake uh, seems like a very scenic place to live. <laughs> right. Right when I'm not, didn't want to do it either. Rather satisfying location. halfway between the start of the lake and Stockholm. <laughs> it's a big lake. It's a big lake. We're not going awful fast, but it's still a big lake. Uh, what does it say? It's uh, 120 kilometers from east to west. These little homesteads on these islands. In there. Gotta be expensive. Right? I don't know. So obviously I'll fly over Stockholm first and then land at the airport. The airport's outside of town. Um, taking a look at the map here, uh, the center of okay. Stockholm is basically where ESSB is, but the airport is ESSA, Arlanda Airport up there. So a fair distance. Lots of islands. Here's a little community. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> it doesn't have a name on the map. Whatever it is. Just a bunch of little houses. They're the suburban. In a way. Oh, we can see some buildings up ahead there at Stockholm. Yeah, we're in 
Got her? Okay. Turn around. He's starting to appear. The back of the engine cover that way. Don't worry, get my easy. Let me get my CB. Got it. I get my CBs real quick. Basically, uh, Stockholm is a choke point in the lake where it has very thin waterways, basically just a river. It narrows to basically a river and then it flows out to the Baltic. So we had a fairly broad lake over there behind us and then you can see these thinner channels to the north and south to our left and right leading up to Stockholm. And they merge and diverge. Around Stockholm. Two uh, fairly tall buildings to our left there for some reason in the middle of nowhere. Well, oh, a few, maybe it's some sort of business district. So here you can see the waterways from the lake converging. Okay, things might be a little bit too sticky now. Oxygen on is good. Look at this place, whatever is going on here. Up outskirts of uh, Stockholm. And we can see the city center there. Very interesting landscape in to the layout to the city. As the once huge lake comes, turns into these waterways here. So this is Stockholm. 
If you see any recognizable sites, feel free to mention it. I can't recognize anything in particular. I think it's generally autogen. There's a thing there, some sort of dome. A semicircular building right there that must be something useful. That dome is curious. What else have you got? Well, that's uh, that's some sort of seems like a palace or some sort of parliament or what, what is that? Hammer by Toppen? No, that's not that. Well, something. It's that. It's definitely something. <laughs> could be a university. Could be a palace. Something. Couldn't quite get it on the map. Everything looks good down here. Okay, well, anyway, that is Stockholm for you. Okay, there goes the uh, H2O. Got one, two. The Baltic Sea is visible, sort of on the horizon there. But we need to get down to landing. So, let's see now. Uh, basically, north south runway is at the airport. get a good view of this side of things. There's a lighthouse there, I think. Some sort of interesting building. That beige tower right there. So sort of a chemical pet petroleum, yeah, probably petroleum thing down here. Elapsed time of the EVA clock start was 131 hours, 29 minutes, 40 seconds. So, Conrad and Bean are on EVA? Oh, where's, where am I? There I am. Okay, good. I see water is on. There's a pink building right there. Well, pink roofed. Could be autogen. Could be something like that. Don't know. There's a building right there that looks interesting too, in the middle of the river. That seems like it would be important. Can't quite zoom in on the map on it right now, though. Okay, I really need to turn towards the airport now. Actually, maybe not. I'm a bit premature. Get this gear out of here. 
here and make sure that my uh, water's on all the way. Okay, you'll have to turn. Okay. Put your arm. Lots of named Wait. suburbs on the map. Hallenbergen. Ursvik. Risne. Rinkaby? I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce any of these. Oh, there's some of those interesting bu tall buildings. This is sort of an industrial area, it looks like. See the airport yet? Oh, uh, I see runway lights. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Into the cockpit. Oh, okay. Let's go for that left runway. That's where we're going. Uh, seems okay. Okay. A little bit of flaps and gear down. A little bit early, but it's okay. Just as. They're getting okay. back onto the lunar yeah. surface. Get it? Get, yeah, ready to go. Okay. Move a little bit to your right. And you're out the hatch. I'll be standing by to get the LAC. Wait a minute. Is it going off? Did the bag go off? I can't tell. Can't do that. Map seems a little bit off. Unless I'm not looking at the okay. runway quite right. I'm undoubtedly a bit low. Seems like one version of the runway is overlaying another version of the runway, I'm not sure, we'll see. Still says too low on the Pappy lights. Hmm. Pete Conrad on the surface at 131.38.58. Uh, he's contrast 
stripes fell down here yesterday. Uh, yeah, so there's only two good ones. The other one's too dirty. All right. It just it doesn't wrap off. It just Okay, ready to transfer the ETB when you are. Okay. Coming right after it right now. Collect the lock on this uh, PB. I uh, need to lock on the LEC. Is, uh, okay. Kind of jammed with uh, dirt. Dirt, yeah. The equipment transfer bag has the two 70 millimeter cameras in it. Those brakes are really strong on this one. <laughs> a lot stronger than on some of the other planes, I'll tell you. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the outside view. We come in. <laughs> He's, is he tripping over them or something? Anyway, we have arrived in Stockholm. Underfoot. underfoot. That's his way of saying he's tripping over them. Okay, uh, I'm gonna pause right there on the audio. I'm gonna continue taxiing. And with that, I'll uh, say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.